Hey there, welcome to Mike's Collection episode 145. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is a couple of the new G.I. Joe retro figures. Now, before I uh, get into the review, I guess I'm, I just want to rant a little bit about that title. It's become very difficult to talk about G.I. Joe's because, like, if we set aside all the kind of the 12-inch dolls of the 60s and the 70s, um, those were before my time, so I don't even really consider them part of this conversation. Although somebody 10, 20 years older than me would definitely want to talk about the first G.I. Joe's being the 12-inch dolls. But for me, G.I. Joe began, you know, the small size figures, 1982, with G.I. Joe, a real American hero. And so now when you talk about that line, which ran from 82 to 94, you know, people call it the vintage line or the original line or the real American hero line, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then the brand kind of went dormant for a few years. It came back in 2002 to 2006, 2007, and the figures were kind of redesigned. There was some new sculpting done. So... A lot of people in the Joe community called those the new sculpt figures, which quickly stopped working because in 2007, uh, Hasbro launched a new line of figures with even newer sculpts. So now calling the previous line the new sculpt era didn't really make sense. Um, and that line, it doesn't have one overarching name. Like the original line, you can call a real American hero. That's an easy way to refer to it. But in the 2000, the early 2000s, you had... Uh, G.I. Joe versus Cobra, and that transitioned into Valor versus Venom, into Spy Troops. So you've got all those little, you know, subtitles. Um, so I don't know what we call that. And then in 2007, they launched what is commonly referred to as the modern line of figures, which were taller, like four inch figures instead of three and three quarter inch figures. They were more detailed, they tend to have more accessories. Um, and so we called those the modern figures, but then that line stopped a couple of years ago and now they make the six inch figures, which are called G.I. Joe Classified. And now they're doing these new retro figures and the retro figures, rather than be in the style of the vintage figures, like you would expect a retro figure to be, they're in the style of the modern figures, which just ended a couple of years ago. So it's confusing because it doesn't make sense to call that line the modern line anymore when we're now two lines removed from it. Anyway, somebody has to sort this out. It's not going to be me. We need somebody of authority to say, this is what we're calling those brands. And yes, you could say that the modern line should be referred to as the 25th anniversary line because when it first launched in 2007, that was the banner it was under. It was 25 years since the launch of A Real American Hero in 82. But the 25th anniversary really, really only applied to the first year of those figures. And this brand went on for 10 or 12 years in the modern line. Uh, it, you know, it led into the rise of Cobra figures from the movie. And then it went into Pursuit of Cobra. Then it went into Retaliation for the second live action movie. It went into Renegades for that animated series. Um, there's all kinds of kind of subtitles again. Um, then it became the 30th anniversary line. And then they went back to the anniversary of the original 12 inch Joe. And they started calling the modern figures the 50th anniversary line. Anyway, it's a bit of a nightmare to talk about this. So I'll probably slip up multiple times when I'm talking about these figures. I might refer to something as the vintage figure or the retro figure, but I'm actually talking about a modern figure. Anyway, you, you don't, you don't care really. So whatever. Um, so we're going to talk about a couple of the brand new retro figures based on the modern figures from a couple of years ago. So let's do that. So here is the brand new retro collection stalker. And I picked this guy up just the other day and he is a pretty cool figure. Get up nice and close and personal here. So like, I really love the sculpting on his like sweater there. You can see all the uh, all the fabric. Very cool. Even on his pants, there's lots of texture on there. So yeah, really great stuff. The head sculpt is really nice. You can tell they're kind of using that printing technology that they're using on a lot of like the six-inch figures. 
we'll spin around take a look at the back so again you still get all the all those nice textures in there and yeah web gear's got lots of nice detail web gear's not painted at all it gets solid black so details like this grenade and stuff belt buckle it would be nice if that stuff got painted but i'm not surprised that none of it is um, that's pretty standard for the smaller figures now for accessories he does have two kind of like machine guns here so that one you can see he's got a trigger finger that's supposed to wrap around in there he doesn't hold that one very well at least not in this hand then he's got this gun here which he's holding much better in this hand now he does have this knife that was actually separate a separate piece and that just fits into his web gear so you can slide that out and slide that back in and he also has a uh a pistol and that's just holstered here on his uh on his belt like so so that's all the accessories and the sculpting articulation this is pretty standard articulation for what we've been seeing on gi joe figures since 2007. so you see he's got the like the double jointed knee there the uh the boots he's got forward and backwards uh i think probably a rocker joint on there as well oh yeah i should mention he comes with the display base which is nice the gi joe logo again standard base that we've been seeing since 2007. so the joints yep so they rock back and forth forward and backwards as well swivel at the boot cut double jointed knees good range of motion there he's got another swivel right there near the top of the leg uh he's got that mid torso joint ball jointed shoulders turns at the elbows turns at the wrists wrists also move so not only do they spin but there's a joint there so he can move his wrist forward and backwards a little bit ball jointed head good range of motion there so yeah pretty pretty standard stuff and he looks great now one of the great things about these retro figures is the cards so we get the original character artwork i know i already showed you an insert of this guy still inside the package before i opened him up but i'm just going to bring the packaging out here again for another second so you get a good shot of that artwork and i believe that's the exact same image that was on the vintage packaging on the first stalker figure they might have tweaked it slightly but it's essentially the same this whole card is very similar to what we would have got on the original 1982 figure the biggest difference i noted with the uh the retro style figures is that the bubble here it's very tall comes right up right up to the gi joe logo um which if you compare it to uh you know the retro carded joes or well, the actual vintage carded joes or even the uh like the two seven, 2007 era what i guess we'll call the 25th anniversary joes their bubble only came up to about here as well. So it's kind of odd to get this really tall bubble. Uh, I'm getting used to seeing it now, but it was also a little strange to see how the card art came right to the edges here because most Joe packaging had like kind of a white border around the edge. So that's a little bit different. On the back, you get the file card, but it's very brief because they've got it in so many different languages here. So for English, you just get this little bit. Normally on the old file cards, there was you know a whole paragraph or two, but here you pretty much just get a little sentence to describe the character. On the back, you see the cross promotion with some of the other figures. So I know Destro Cobra Commander Duke Lady J had come out previously. So I think Stalker came out in a wave strictly with uh, the Cobra Trooper here. I think it's just a wave of two figures essentially. And then you just got all the, the legal jargon down there at the bottom. Now, I still have my original Stalker from 1982. Um, back then, I would have been four years old. And there was originally 13 G.I. Joes on that, in that first wave of figures, as well as a couple of Cobras. But out of the 13 Joes, and those guys are commonly referred to as the original 13, uh, I had three of them, and my brother Doug had the additional 10. Now, I know that might seem kind of lopsided, but my brother was two years older, so, uh, you know, he had a lot more. He was already in school and he had friends and stuff. So when he had a birthday party and G.I. Joe was the hot property, of course, all of his friends, you know, bought him G.I. Joe figures and stuff. So, yeah, Doug had the majority of them in the early days and I was left with just three. 
So those three figures I had were quite important to me. Um, whereas, you know, Doug would have had Rock and Roll and Breaker and, and Clutch and Grunt. It might have been harder for him to pick a favorite. But for me, I had Snake Eyes, Short Fuse, and Stalker. So I love all those characters. Unfortunately, my original 82 Stalker has seen better days. So here he is. And again, I still love this figure. He's got a lot of personality in that face sculpt, even though they were kind of painted with, like, there's no detail in the eyes there. There's no pupils and stuff. But still, just the, the sculpt itself, you know, really differentiates him from the other Joes in the line because a lot of the other Joes shared the same head. Um, so you would get the same head, like, two or three times over. So it was Clutch, Rock and Roll, Breaker, they all have the same head, and Grunt and Grand Slam. But Stalker looked very unique amongst the original 13. So it's not uncommon for G.I. Joes to break like this over time. Um, the elastic that holds them together just like rots away. So I do have all of his pieces here. But uh, I can kind of hold them together. This is weird Frankenstein G.I. Joe. But, uh, so I have a lot of Joes that are broken apart like that. But this guy, you can see, he's, uh, he's very well loved. He's been busted up. Through lots of playtime. Like not only is he has his elastic broken, but unfortunately his his crotch is broken off, which is a common injury for a lot of Joes. But not only that, I think he might have even broken back here as well. Um, he's missing a thumb, which often happens with these old Joes. They were pretty brittle, very hard plastic. Um, and his uh, this other arm still has a thumb intact. But this is a this is a really devastating injury because this guy that's legit broken. There's not much you can do about that. You could maybe crazy glue it, but then he would lose all the movement in his arm. So yeah, Stalker here, uh, original 1982 figure. He's in rough shape, but you can see the similarities in these guys and how this new version is based off of this uh, 1982 version. Very similar outfit. He's got the same beret. You know, you got the grenade on the one side, the knife on the other side of his web gear. That green camo matches up color-wise pretty closely. Now, there have been lots of stalkers over the years. And if you want to find a checklist on just how many versions there are of any particular G.I. Joe character, the best resource on the web is yojo.com. They take uh, photos of every figure that comes out in the three and three quarter to four inch scale, and they keep track of the year and the accessories and the parts that are you know used to build the figure, all that stuff. But sometimes it can be a little confusing, uh, and Stalker is one of the guys that's a little bit confusing. So he's pretty straightforward at first. So the first one, eighty two, version two came out in nineteen eighty nine. And that was the one where he was in his winter outfit with his kayak. Um, and then we got other versions. The last three years of the original G.I. Joe toy line, we got a stalker every single year. So we got version 3 in 92, version 4 in 93, and version 5 in 94. So again, that was all pretty straightforward. But then during kind of the new sculpt years, I guess is what we call them, from 2002 to 2006, they had lost the rights to the name Stalker or something along those lines. That's not uncommon for uh, toys is like a company like Hasbro or Mattel doesn't renew the name. So for them to use it again, they either have to, uh, I don't know, purchase it back or use a slight variation. So with Stalker, and you can actually see this right here on his base, they've called him Sergeant Stalker. So when you change the character's name from Stalker to Sergeant Stalker, uh, yojo.com accounts for those as two different figures so instead of saying sergeant stalker is stalker version six they say that is sergeant stalker version one and then later he goes back to the name stalker and then it just gets really confusing so to say exactly how many stalkers there are it's hard to say but i believe that this is version 23 of stalker in this scale so there was multiple versions of him in the new sculpt years, and I have a bunch of them, but I didn't bother to haul them out for this video. Um, in the, it's, we used to call this style the modern line, but that doesn't really work anymore. But uh, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to call them 
the modern line. We could call them the 25th anniversary or whatever. But uh, that line, the modern line, started in 2007. And some of those figures that initially came out were pretty clunky, you know, bad proportions, bad sculpting, bad articulation. But Stalker is one of the figures that I think they really nailed right off of the bat. Like, I really love this figure from 2007. Like, I like the, uh, the face sculpt on him. I like the proportions. Like, you know, he lacks some of the detail. Like, you can see he's got that sculpted collar on his vet, on his uh, sweater here, but he doesn't have any of the, uh, you know, the texture in the sweater the way this guy does. So this guy is definitely a step up as far as that stuff goes. But even now, even though this face maybe looks like a more realistic face, I think I prefer this head sculpt. I just, I loved this figure from the moment I got it, and I still think it holds up quite well. And you can see they've gone the extra mile here in that they've painted the grenade, painted his belt buckle. You know, he's got another silver paint app there. He's got this extra pouch with more paint apps here. It's a really great figure. Even things like this, you know, they could have just painted that all black, but they've got an extra paint app on there. Looks really good. So it's a good thing that this figure was as strong as it was because the next two um, stalkers they released were straight repaints of that figure. So in 2008, we got that same figure again in his more kind of cartoon colors. So he's a little more like yellow in this camouflage. Plus the camouflage is a lot bigger patterns, which is probably how it was in the cartoon to make it simpler for the animators. But yeah, so very cool. And they also added a, a jet pack for this version, which is something that they used in the cartoons quite a bit. And then we got that figure again, this time in a darker green camo, again with a jet pack. So even though these are three identical sculpted figures and the paint jobs are all pretty similar, just green on green camo, they're all pretty unique and I like them all. Like normally I wouldn't necessarily buy these three figures if I didn't think they were, if it was justified. Believe it or not, I don't buy absolutely every G.I. Joe. Out of the 23 versions of Stalker, I would say I probably have about half of them. I probably have 12 or 13. So uh, there's plenty of times when I passed on a version of Stalker and of other characters if I think, ah, this is too similar to something I already have. But these guys here, I think, all really stand on their own, and they're all pretty strong figures. Um, the, I missed out on the next Stalker, which was based on the Resolute cartoon, but I did buy this version from the Pursuit of Cobra line. And this is kind of a different look for the character. Again, he's got that sculpting on the sweater, but the face sculpt... I don't know if it's so much that the face is different, but he's got this hair, which is pretty crazy. So this is definitely something new. I think I'm trying to make Stalker seem a little bit, I don't know, hipper or something with uh, the dreads. Uh, you know, it's a cool look for somebody, but I don't necessarily love it for Stalker. I don't know. It just makes him seem a little too, I don't know, a little too street, a little too young. And it's just not how I picture uh, Stalker. So, again... The green camo, his web gear is much more detailed this time. He's got a lot of extra, a lot of extra stuff hanging off of him here. So it's a great figure. I just think it works better as a different character. Uh, and then we get a couple other versions after this. We got a Tiger Force version, and we got a new version of the Winter Kayak Stalker. Uh, I have both of those, but I didn't bother to haul them out for this video because they're, you know, of a different design. This one here is based on his original green camo look, and uh, these are the versions of that I have in my collection. All of them strong. I think this one is probably the best, just in that his, you know, he's a little bit bigger. Um, like everything from uh, like the arms are thicker. The boots are bigger. Like, they could have reused a lot of these pieces, but I think this guy is mostly new. He might share a couple parts with some of the newer, some of the other new figures in this retro line, but they didn't take a bunch of parts from the 25th anniversary line, which is what I thought they were originally planning to do with these figures. So, you know, he's got a lot of great new pieces. Um, his proportions are probably the best, but maybe it's nostalgia talking, but I think this is still my favorite stalker figure in my collection i think he's great so there you go that's retro stalker
Now this here is the new Retro Cobra Hiss version 3. So the Cobra Hiss is the popular Cobra tank. Uh, it's been around forever. The original Hiss tank was released in 1983 and it was in solid black. Um, I have that original one still and I love it. It's just such a cool design. As far as I know, it's not based on anything out of the real world. And I just thought it was so much more interesting than the kind of standard real world tank that the G.I. Joes drove around in. I just thought, I always loved this Cobra Hiss tank. And uh, if you've watched any of my past G.I. Joe videos, I've told you about how I'm, I'm not really into the vehicles. Um, like even now, whenever they make G.I. Joe vehicles, I try to avoid buying them. If I could get the, fig the figure on its own, I would much rather do that. And that's mainly because I just don't have the room for vehicles. They take up a lot of space, and when I put them in storage, they tend to all get broken anyway. So I'd really rather not go through the trouble of buying them just to kind of pack them away. But the one exception to that is the Cobra His Tank. I have a whole lot of Cobra vehicles dating back to my childhood in the 80s, and then other vehicles that I had to purchase kind of through the 2000s in order to get the figures that were packaged with them. And they are all... Uh, boxed up in like bins probably getting broken except for my his tanks from my original his tank right up to my most recent I have them all out on display with my action figures I just love this thing so they released the Cobra Hiss version 1 in the first wave of these retro figures so it was the same same tank except in the standard black which was based off the 83 original um, and I wanted to buy that. If I had seen it, I definitely would have bought it, even though I think it would be pretty much the same as the other Black Hiss tanks I have. The main reason I wanted it, again, was for the figure, because it came with the standard Hiss driver, but with some newly sculpted parts. So that was the real selling feature for me. Um, so I missed it, which is kind of disappointing. But I was glad that they re-released it with the Hiss version 3. And, uh, you know, they skipped over version 2. Um, which is good. Version 3 is the blue version, and I actually did not have a blue Hiss tank in my collection. So this is not a duplicate the way the version 1 Hiss tank would have been. So not only do I get a blue Hiss tank finally to add to my collection, because I have them in multiple colors, um, but I also get uh, another cool character, which is the same figure that would have come with the Wave 1 Hiss tank, but he would have been in the standard red whereas this guy is in the blue, and instead of being just a standard pilot, the blue his tank driver is a unique character. You'll see they've, he's got the name Rip It there. So this is a really cool vintage style box. Um, but one thing I really like about this is a while back, I bought the Retro Fang, the Cobra Copter, which I've got right here. And it came in a box similar to this. Um, I kept it, but I tucked it away and I don't want to dig it out right now but uh so it had this cool artwork and everything on the box but the little window where the figure was was actually a window so you could see through it and see the actual figure um but since I opened mine up and I took the figure out if I wanted to display that box anywhere you would just see this kind of like gaping hole in the box so this one I actually prefer it that it's just an image of the figure on the front so I can take everything all the contents out of this box but I can still set this on my shelf and it looks like a sealed piece, which is really cool. So I love the artwork on the front there. You've got Rip It piloting the tank and then you've got Cobra Commander and a Cobra Trooper in the back. On the side, you get a little image of the tank. On the back, another image of the toy as well as a file card for Rip It. And which is kind of strange in that they actually give him a name. I actually don't think I read this before I filmed this. And uh, yeah, the fact that his name is Fred is kind of interesting. If you're well versed in G.I. Joe lore, all of the Crimson Guards are named Fred, and all of the Freds um, get plastic surgery to look like one another. Um, and I won't get into that whole story here, but yeah, it's just interesting that they've given this guy a name and that he's Fred. So I wonder if he looks like all the other Freds when he takes his helmet off. Interesting. But let's pop this box open and take a look at the actual vehicle and the figure. So here is the Hiss tank out of the box. And it looks great. 
looks like a standard his tank um, I, I imagine some of these pieces are pretty much the exact same as the tank that I had as a kid in 1983 I know they've had to make some changes to this mold um, since that original because they started reusing this again in the uh, you know when they launched the modern line in 2007 we got multiple versions of this in during those years and those figures since they went from being three and three quarter inches to four inches they got taller so they had to extend the uh, the area where the figure can sit so like the cockpit is enlarged either they added some room here or they pushed the seat back so there's definitely some sculpting that was changed but basically it's the same thing so you can see here how the uh, clear canopy can be opened up and just kind of snaps back in place it, uh, it rolls back and forth the treads don't actually move which is too bad although we did get that on other versions of the his tank I can show you but on the bottom you just get these two uh, kind of rolly bars here so there's basically four wheels that touch the floor so you just roll it along on those and so other than that the lifting canopy the only other real feature is the gun turret back here so not only can the guns be raised but this whole thing swivels around so they shoot in uh, you know 360 directions or 360 degrees I guess I should say so yeah very cool and uh, one thing I like about this that I wasn't expecting is uh, the painted detail on the treads there it's got that brown kind of overwash on there which gives it this gritty dirty look like it's been driving through the mud or the desert and that's really cool it adds a lot of kind of uh, believability to this thing because otherwise you know it's just there's no paint apps on the base of the vehicle you know the top and the bottom the two main parts of blue plastic it's just a very you know very rich blue and makes it look like kind of not like a real a real world vehicle because it looks it looks plastic it looks more like a toy with that color but adding this uh, grit to the tires or to the treads uh, it really kind of adds some realism to it which I think is cool uh, now this thing here when I opened it up it didn't have any stickers on it so that's kind of cool because that's like a throwback to the you know the vintage toy line when you bought these things they didn't have any uh, stickers and you had to snap most of the pieces together so uh, that's cool I'm sure some people really appreciate that but honestly I find it a little stressful um, I don't want to be the one to ruin my vehicle by putting the stickers on crooked it's one thing if I buy it and the stickers a little crooked and I say oh well whatever what could I do but when it's a clean slate um, and I have to put the stickers on myself I'm always worried that it's gonna come off weird or I'm gonna put them in a weird spot some of them can be really hard to handle sometimes the corners get a little bent I think this one came out okay for me you can see there's stickers here 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 there on the back same thing on this side the one thing that I probably kind of screwed up you get another sticker there I think there's a sticker in the cockpit as well maybe nope there wasn't um, but this sticker on the front so this red I don't know grill or whatever you want to call it I think that's supposed to sit flush and flat up against there but as you can see I've kind of got mine bent and it's kind of on a bit of an arc because I simply couldn't get it in there and when I tried it already started to stick and whatever I just left it so I did kind of screw that up but uh, whatever anyway I think it's a great looking tank now before I move on to talking about the driver of the his tank I just want to do some comparisons to the other his tanks in my collection so first up we'll take a look at my original 1983 his tank and this thing is surprisingly in pretty good shape so here we are this is the one that I've had since 1983 I've had it as a kid it's extremely dusty I brushed it off a little bit but you can see how bad the dust is in all the little crevices and stuff here but other than the foot pegs in the back being broken off like the stickers here are all still in in good shape this one even has additional stickers here it's got this little panel here you know the wheels on the bottom are all still intact so yeah it's holding up pretty great I'm actually surprised that it's in this good of shape the canopy still opens up and here you might be able to see how it's a little shorter in there like there's no seam in the seat which you might have noticed the seam 
in this one, which is how I think they extended the mold. So you see, there's that clear kind of line there. So I think that's where it was sort of redesigned. Also, this one's got the kind of pattern in the back there. I don't know if the original one has that or not. No, there's no pattern in the back of this tank. Just a lot of dust. And you'll notice I did a better job with the sticker on the front there. That's probably because my dad did it. When I was a little kid, um, the vehicles usually had to be assembled, but my dad would like get up on, you know, stay up late on Christmas night and assemble the toys for us. So they would they'd be waiting for us under the tree all put together. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, he did a better job with the stickers than, than I would have done. So anyway, you can see just how similar these are and why I believe that most of the mold is still true to the original uh, 83 tank. So, uh, and you'll notice here the numbers on this one. So this one's designated 788. All right, so let's move on to the next one. So this here is my black his tank from the modern line. So it's again, very similar. The main differences are it's got a new number. This is number one. And the stickers are white Cobra logos instead of the, uh, the red Cobra logos that you saw on my 83 original. But otherwise, pretty much the exact same thing. Here's my red his tank, which works out great for say the Crimson Guard or something like that. But uh, again, you'll see it's got its own number designation, 818. It's got nice silver Cobra logos on there. But otherwise, same old design. So now we're starting to shake things up a little bit. This is the Arctic his tank, also from the modern line. So this one here, again, shares the same basic you know, body for the tank but it does have some new add-ons. So you'll see instead of the gun turret that has this missile launcher, and these missiles fall off if you look at them wrong. So I gotta be very careful. These things are really sensitive. And it also has this whole piece here. So you could store some weapons or something maybe on that side. And over here, it looks, it's just, you can't really use this. It's not functional, but it looks like a rolled up canopy or something. So anyway, another, cool redesign of the tank you know rather than just giving us in white they actually gave us something a little different which is kind of cool now this is kind of a weird one this was a convention exclusive and this is a gi joe like a good guy his tank the premise behind the box set was that cobra and gi joe captured um, some of their enemies vehicles and repurposed them uh, for themselves so uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. It's got the GI Joe logos and the stars instead of the Cobra logos. Otherwise it's the same except for the gun turret. So it's still a double barreled gun, but you'll notice it's got a, a more modern design. These guns look a little bit more intense than say these, these little guns, which were just you know pretty, pretty narrow little guns. Whereas these things are much more heavy duty. So, there you go, that's pretty cool. It's nice to get another little variation there. And the last of my classic styled Hiss tanks is this one in orange. So now they've basically taken that design of the GI Joe tank with the more heavy duty guns and now Cobras get their hands on it. And now it's orange. We're back to the silver Cobra logos. And this is the, uh, the tank that was released with the two orange Hiss drivers. So yeah, this was pretty cool. I like this one. Now, besides this classic Hiss tank, which is the best and my absolute favorite, and it's iconic, um, they have messed around with this basic design a few times. Uh, I showed you earlier what the Hiss 2, so the second version of this tank ever to come out was a total redesign. You know, it had the same basic structure, but it was all new parts, and, you know, I didn't really care for that design very much. Um, they reused it to create the septic tank, which was basically the... Uh, the, a version of the his tank used by cesspool and his and the like the eco warriors was an environmentalist kind of sub team in the gi joe brand and you know so there have been a couple of redesigns i don't have any of them i never really cared for the redesigns except for um around the time of the second live action movie with gi joe retaliation we did get a new design of the his tank it was not superior to the original, but I did kind of dig this new redesign and I ended up getting it in quite a few different colors. Now, it's a little larger, which is partly what I like about it. These tanks, you know, I think they're awesome in design, but they are almost a little small and a little quaint. 
So this new one, and this is the only blue hiss tank I had before this new one came along, is this one here. And I'll probably have to boot this guy right out of here so you can get a good look at my blue hiss tank. So yeah, this thing is pretty crazy. Oops. So you can see it's designed. So it's still got those, you know, angular treads that are, you know, a trademark of the hiss tank. So it's still got some basic design elements, but this uh, cannon on the back is much larger. And these things actually spring forward to make them taller and, you know, seemingly even bigger. And it's just got more firepower. It's got not only the big cannon, but it's got the two Gatling guns on each side. So yeah, even though these will never surpass the original Hiss tank, I think this design was actually still pretty great. Here it is in purple, designed to look like the Transformer Shockwave. So it's got his, uh, not only the Decepticon logos, but it's got his iconic kind of shaped cannon. And it's also got his cycloptic eye on the front. So yeah, this one's pretty cool. Here it is in brown. Um, and this one's a little bit different in that instead of a glass canopy, it's got a solid piece. So I don't know how the pilot is supposed to see outside of this thing, but uh, they, there you see the spring up action. So when you push down on it, it kind of pops up like so, and then you push it down into place. And now I'll probably never get it to lock back in there, but there you go. So this one's pretty cool. Now one thing I'll point out about this, which is kind of nerdy, is I got this pretty early on into my relationship with my now wife, Vanessa and when I first got this thing it came with a whole bunch of letters and number stickers So you could kind of put whatever you wanted on there if you wanted to give it You know the 788 designation like the original Cobra Hiss or something else. So here I use the letters to spell Cobra And on this side I've got Nessa. So that was my nerdy romantic gesture to name my Hiss tank after my girlfriend And lastly, here's the same one in red so this is a crimson his tank in the modern style. This is the exact same as the brown one in that it has the armored canopy up front instead of the glass. And you'll see here, I was a little self-indulgent this time and I named the tank after myself with Mike J on that side and Highland on this side. Why not? So here is the driver of the Cobra Hiss 3. This is Rip It. And I think Rippet is pretty great. I love his colors. He's got that very rich blue with the red, and that really pops. The colors on this guy actually pop so much that he kind of stands out amongst my other figures. Like, he's very bright. Uh, he matches up with his tank uh, quite well, as far as the, the shades of blue and red. And like the tank, it kind of makes him look a little more like a toy i guess not that the other figures don't look like toys but you know just with some more muted colors it makes them look a little bit more believable in the real world whereas this guy's costume is just so bright and crisp it looks a little more plastic but it actually matches up pretty well with the other cobra trooper i have from this uh, vintage line which is this guy here. I think he was just called Cobra Pilot or Fang Pilot. So he came with the little copter. And I had the same observations about him when I first got him is that his blue didn't match up with any of the other Cobra Troopers on my shelf. But if they continue to make Cobra Troopers in this vintage line and they have this consistent black, red, and blue across the board, then I think that'll be pretty cool and they'll almost seem like perhaps their own little sub-team within Cobra. So the very first Hiss driver that came with the original 1983 Hiss tank was one of my favorite vintage figures uh, on the Cobra side. Um, I don't know, I really liked his red. It really made him stand out. Uh, him and Wild Weasel were both favorites of mine and they were both uh, you know, wearing this bright red and there weren't too many other Cobra characters in those early days that were wearing red. So uh, yeah, I liked him a lot. Um, I could break him out for this uh, review, but I'm pretty sure that my Vintage Hiss is in a bunch of pieces, just like my Stalker was, and I, just, I don't feel like digging them out. But uh, that original Hiss mold, uh, it was never reused to create another version of the Hiss driver. The only time Hasbro ever reused that Hiss mold was to create a new character called Rip It in 2000. 
So here is the 2000 Rip It. So it's the exact same figure as the 83 Hiss Driver, um, except now he's a unique character and he's got some pretty drastically different colors. So his base uniform was blue with the red mask, the black goggles. Still has those same, you know, thigh high boots, you know, that go almost right up to the top of his legs. Anyway, I always really loved this figure. Uh, I still, I think I prefer the red version, but it looks pretty cool in this blue as well. Now, you could look at this figure. I think some people kind of write this one off as having its head is too big and he looks maybe kind of goofy, but that never bothered me as a kid. I always thought he was pretty great. So, uh, in the modern G.I. Joe line, the first time they redid the the Hiss driver is they remade the original 83 driver. So we got him here. So he's got the, the padded chest, he's got the thigh high boots, and he's in those kind of classic colors from 1983, and he looks great. And we got that figure in a bunch of different colors. So here's another one with some red and silver. This guy here, he's like all black and blue. A little bit later, he got this outfitted with this big old flak vest. So here he is in kind of like a dark maroon. He's got some different pieces here for the arms and stuff now. But now he has this big uh, pack on there as well. And the big old pack returns on these orange ones that we've got. So yeah, they made you know good use out of this mold. And one of the versions they gave us was a brand new version of Rip It, known as the Hiss Commander. So this guy, he now he's not the exact same. You notice he's got a black face piece and silver goggles instead of black goggles and a red uh, face mask. But clearly this was intended to be an updated version of Rip It. So I really loved it. Thought it was a great figure, still do. So any issues that people might have had with the vintage guy having too big a head, um, I think this modern version of the Hiss Driver slash Rip It works really well. He's much better proportioned and I just, I really love the sculpting on this guy and love everything about him. So uh, they could have just, you know, repainted this guy, re-released this guy with the new Retro Hiss Tank. If they wanted to release him in maybe brighter colors like this, they could have done that. But they actually went ahead and created what looks to be a whole new figure. So if we look at just the two Rip It figures side by side, you'll see that when you get up close that they aren't reusing the same parts. Like at first glance, you might think, well, he's got the same boots. But when you get him up close, you see like, you can really see on the upper leg, those three plates on Rip It, they're shaped differently than the ones on this figure here. Um, the, the knees here, like it's a different shape uh, knee pad. You can see the pin in the leg there is quite a bit bigger on the newer figure than on the older figure. So that's all different. The, uh, the arms, you'll see those are different as well. He's got a different type of cuff around his wrist. He's got the pouch kind of sculpted on this arm that he doesn't have here. The chest, whoops, the chest is obviously different. Uh, around the neck, you know, he's got a collar there that this guy doesn't have. And the head, most importantly, because that's what really gets me excited about a new figure. I don't mind if they reuse arms and legs and stuff, but as long as the character gets a new head, then that really makes it feel worth hunting down and adding to my collection. And this is, you know, the same design, but clearly a totally different sculpted head. It gives them a pretty different look, you know, colors aside. It's just the whole shape of the helmet has kind of changed. And I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I still kind of have a preference for this head. I think it's a little closer to the vintage look, you know, as far as the sculpt, even though this guy's colors match the vintage rip it better. Um, but yeah, they're both really cool. I like them quite a bit. And you'll see on his chest piece, like this is just sculpted onto him as one piece. But with this guy here, it's like a separate web, web gear. But even that is different than the vest we get on these figures. You can tell at a glance just how much bigger, oops, how much bigger this guy's vest is compared to his. So I'm not going to say 100% that this guy's 100% new parts. Um, like he said, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe he shares some limbs with, you know, one or two of the other figures in this new uh, retro line. But uh, it doesn't look, appear to borrow any parts from the modern line of figures. 
So pretty cool. I like him quite a bit and I'm happy to add him to my collection. And uh, yeah, I still kind of want to hunt down the uh, the first, the Black His Tank from Wave 1 of the Vintage line because I'd like to get the same figure in red as well because it looks pretty cool. So that is my review of Stalker and the Cobra Hiss version 3 and Rip It. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave me comments, and uh, yeah, that would be excellent. So thank you for watching. I'll be back soon with another video. Until then, ciao.